Hey Ruth family, just a few months ago, we were journeying through the season of Lent together with Isaiah 58 framing our thoughts. We focused on how God's people are called not just to observe personal spiritual practices like fasting, which are good, but that our worship of God is to form us into a people who have eyes to see injustice in society and that our love for God is expressed in our love for our neighbors. In that series, we, talked, we also talked about the critical importance of lament. Then during Holy Week, we focused on how at the core of our faith is the conviction that Jesus is reigning as Lord of all people groups right now, that Jesus has won the decisive victory against sin and death and has inaugurated the kingdom of God among us. And yet we also acknowledge that God's kingdom has yet not fully been established. We still await Jesus' return to make all things right. In this in-between time, we experience both the brilliant light of God's love filling us and uniting us, but also at times we experience the intense darkness of sin and death fracturing us and clinging to this world with their last gasps. This past week, that darkness showed up again when a video surfaced of the murder of a young black man named Ahmad Arbery in Brunswick, Georgia. Ahmad was jogging in his neighborhood when two white men claimed he fit the description of a suspected burglar, armed themselves to confront him and shot him to death. While this murder took place on February 23rd, the two white men who murdered Ahmad were not charged or arrested until this week after the release of the video led to a massive public outcry. Beloved, the pain that injustices like this cause our black sisters and brothers is egregious. Year after year, decade after decade, our black sisters and brothers are shown that this society does not value their lives, that their lives are expendable, that their everyday activities are threatening, that their very existence is criminal, and that their murders are justifiable. Even here in St. Paul, Minnesota, this past week, an unarmed black man named Doug Lewis was shot and killed by a white driver he rear-ended in a car accident. Our black family members in Christ are grieving today. Ahmad's mother, Wanda Cooper James, and Ahmad's father, Marcus James, are grieving today. Doug Lewis's sister, Valerie, is grieving today. And Ahmad and Douglas's blood cries out for justice as the evil principality and power of racism continues to cling to this nation and steal lives from their families and communities. In my own family, these murders have made Oshida and me fear for the safety of our own children. Will they be profiled, prejudged, and attacked? It has made me fear for Oshida's safety. Will her everyday activities be perceived as dangerous or criminal? It has also made us angry angry at the callous indifference and even murderous hatred in people's hearts, angry at the corruption of a police department that would attempt to cover up Ahmad's murder, angry at a white driver who would take someone's life over a fender bender, angry at the deafening silence from some corners of the American church, angry that more black lives were needlessly cut short by racist violence. As a local expression of the body of Christ and as Roots Covenant Church, we are being formed to resist all the powers of evil, including anti-black racism and the evil lie of white supremacy. As a local expression of the body of Christ and as Roots Covenant Church, we are an intentionally multi-ethnic family of Jesus disciples who celebrate all the diversity of humanity and mourn with those who mourn. I'm grateful for the pastoral leaders in the Evangelical Covenant Church, like Executive Minister Paul Robinson and Director of Racial Righteousness, Dominique Gilliard, for helping to teach us how to respond in times like this. On Friday, they wrote, Lament, confession, and repentance are spiritual practices that reorient and sustain us amid tragedy. They lead us into the presence of God and help us discern what faithfulness looks like moving forward. And that is why I want to invite us to lament together as a church. I'll read the portions that are 
uh, not bolded, and together we will read the bolded portions. Lord, we come before your throne in excruciating pain and immense sorrow. We cry out, echoing the psalmist, asking, How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? We are enraged by racial violence and overwhelmed by how frequently it is expressed in our country. We lament the murders of Ahmaud Arbery and Doug Lewis, and we cry out to you for justice. How long, Lord, until your shalom justice covers the earth like the waters cover the sea? Lord, many within the body of Christ and our covenant family are haunted by what can feel like your silence amid unspeakable tragedy. Give your church the moral courage to confront racial injustice and to name the satanic lie of white supremacy and fight against it. Give the governing authorities wisdom to do justice and to support just laws. Lord, we petition you to console our brokenhearted sisters and brothers, drawing them near to you. May you restore their souls by making your presence felt and love concretely known. In the name of the righteous judge, King Jesus, we pray. Amen.